Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on just the upcoming DCU, but more specifically, the upcoming Green Lantern show of Lantern. So, when it comes to the world of the DCU or the new DC reboot coming our way creatively, at the very least, under the eyes of James Gunn, one of the biggest stories, I guess you could say, from the past few weeks has been around the casting of Lanterns and its respective characters. Of course, Lanterns being the upcoming HBO series around the Green Lantern core and just this dark mystery set on Earth. We don't know too many details about this dark mystery, just it's a dark mystery set on Earth. This show, of course, focusing on two Lanterns in particular, that being Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. Now, we are still waiting on the official casting announcements for, for both of these two lead lanterns for the series, but the one caught in the news over the past couple of weeks, roughly, has been that of Hal Jordan, who will be the senior and more experienced of the two in this series. So, it was like early last week, I want to say, or maybe late the week before that, I think something. Anyway, it was around the time that we got the report that Josh Brolin was the lead contender for the role of this older Hal Jordan on the show of Lanterns, and that he had been offered the role officially, like, hey, it's yours if you want it. And it was just whether he actually accepts the role. So the news wasn't that he was officially cast, it's just that if he wants it, it's his. So, as you'd expect, many were waiting on bated breath as to whether he would accept it or not, as the vast majority were not really happy with this possible casting. Some were fine with it. I think, like, a lot of the general people, probably the people that didn't even see the news would be happy with it because it's Josh Brolin, but a lot of the people that are familiar with the character of Howard Jordan, even if it was, even if it was an older version, were like, ah, uh, don't think that's the right way. But the next few days after that uh, reveal that Josh Brolin had been offered the, the role, a few more contenders for this role of Hal Jordan with Ewan McGregor, Matthew McConaughey, Timothy Oliphant and Chris Pine uh, were revealed and they were also reportedly being on the shortlist for this role with Chris Pine apparently being the next favorite after Josh Brolin uh, uh, you know, for this role, which makes that an interesting thing to watch out for over the next, I don't know, week or so considering the news today. But now, thanks to The Hollywood Reporter, we have a big update in regards to this casting of Howard Jordan for Lens. This was their exclusive, but the other trades have sort of gone with it as well. But this is what they had to say exclusively. Josh Brolin passes on HBO's Greenland TV show exclusive. DC is now looking to put the power ring on another actor for Lens. Josh Brolin will not be wearing the ring after all. The actor has passed on an offer to star in Lanterns, the DC Studios series based on the Green Lantern superhero character, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Brolin was eyed to play Hal Jordan, the cocky Green Lantern hero previously played by Ryan Reynolds in the ill-fated 2011 Green Lantern movie. According to multiple sources, the actor received an offer at the end of August, so about two weeks ago roughly. By the end of this past weekend, his mind was made up. No other details were available. Lanterns already has a high pedigree as Ozark's Chris Mundy is showrunning the eight episodes series and co-writes with Damon Lindelof, the creator of HBO's Watchmen and seminal TV show Lost, as well as Eisner award-winning comics author Tom King. The show, which falls under the HBO banner, is casting and in the middle of hiring directors. This series is looking to shoot from next January to June in Atlanta. The internet was all a buzz at the prospect of Brolin playing Jordan. I don't know if a buzz is the best word. In, f in fear? I don't know. Anyway. Although he was never a sure thing, speculation also arose around several other A-listers, but it's unclear how valid those rumors are. Matthew McConaughey, for example, who we mentioned before is one of the people that was shortlisted, will not be donning the ring, according to sources. Now, I don't know if that means that he pulled out or he was never offered the role at all. I'm assuming this they're hinting that he was actually never approached at all. Layton's is described as having a gritty true detective vibe as it focuses on Jordan reluctant, uh, reluctantly, can I speak reluctantly, reluctant, reluctantly, oh god there we go, get it out page mate, reluctantly mentoring a younger Len, John Stewart, who in DC publishing history was one of the company's first black superheroes. The story sees the two characters investigating an earthbound murder with large implications. Sources say that DC and the producers are looking for a young, more fresh-faced actor for the role to play opposite an older and bigger name. So my overall thoughts on this is that it's a very interesting thing, just this show, because I think this is a show that has a lot on it, if that makes sense. I don't know if necessarily pressure is the word, but there's a lot at stake with the show in regards to what they want to do creatively, which we will touch upon in a second. But the first, I just sort of want to go through this as it was sort of laid out in this article. Why didn't Josh Brolin accept it? That's always a question when someone turns it down. It's like, you know, if you were just even going along with it, along with the flow for it to even be offered the role, surely you've had to have had some interest in it. So what pushed him away from it? 
I think with a lot of actors, time commitments is a big thing. That's six months, January through to June of next year. We don't know what's going on. We know, like, there's meant to be, like, another Dune movie and stuff. Like, I know could be involved in that. There's, You know, he might be like, oh, six months for a TV series. Is it worth my time? I could film two movies in that time if I really wanted to. So, that might be what he's thinking. Maybe he also felt he wasn't the best suit. I'm not saying he's on Twitter. I highly doubt Josh Brolin's scrolling through Twitter saying what people thought of the potential of him playing Hal Jordan. But maybe he should thought, you know what? I don't think this role is for me or I don't really have a you know great interest in playing it. I'm not too sure. It's always an interesting thing when an, oct- when an actor, sorry, doesn't accept something when they're the first choice. You know, and I'm sure he would have got paid a decent amount for it as well. So I'm sure money wasn't the issue here. So... Interesting. Um, I don't think it really reflects on the quality of the show at all. I think the show is going to be good, especially with the pedigree of the writers and stuff with the creators behind it, like Chris Mundy, obviously Damon Lindelof and stuff like that. So yeah, that's always just an interesting thing when someone pulls out of something and just goes, you know what? I don't want the role. You can give it to someone else. Obviously, the second thing of interest from that sort of thing from The Hollywood Reporter there was that Matthew McConaughey reportedly was never really in the fold for this. As I said before, interesting whether it was just that he sort of pulled himself out of it and was like, ah, no, nah, you know what, don't include me in the shortlist anymore, or he was never in the fold at all. So that's what they're saying, at least according to their sources. Now, this casting of Matthew McConaughey, if they went with it, would have felt a bit a bit too on the nose, if you want to put it, as it as it's been described there. Um, you know, the show's been described as well as what the article from The Holy Reporter repeats as having a true detective vibe, probably referring to the first season. And of course, the first season of True Detective has Matthew McConaughey in a lead role. So maybe just a bit too on the nose. I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't know if that would have been the best way to go with it. And of course, the last thing of note there, just to talk about specifically in regards to the article and what they bring up, is the John Stewart casting description. So they're looking for a young, more fresh-faced actor for the role alongside an older and bigger name. And I think that's the first time that one of these bigger things, which actually have sources, um, has brought that up. Though it's what a lot of people presume would be the case. You'd get a familiar face, whether it's just recognizable or very recognizable as your Hal Jordan and maybe some other small roles throughout the show, but your John Stewart is a, whether it's an up and comer or just, you know, decent sized actor, but nowhere near as big. You know, there's, I know there's a lot of like fan castings and stuff like that. Uh, there's that new Netflix movie, Rebel Ridge, which you haven't watched it, you should watch it. It's got Aaron Pierre in it. A lot of people fan casting him. I actually like him to play Martian Manhunter. Because uh, I, I have a feeling, uh, like, uh, just, just go on a bit of a segue. Not a segue, just a bit of a, uh, just steer off the, the beaten path for a bit. I like Martian Manhunter having, like, unique features where it almost looks, not looks like an alien, but it almost looks like it's just unique or something like that. And Aaron Pierre has that. I think he'd be good as a Martian Manhunter. I don't know necessarily if he just screams John Stewart. There's probably some other actors that maybe, maybe uh, A, look more like John Stewart, but also probably fit more into that thing. Um, but I wouldn't be against it at the same time because he's a good actor. But there's a lot of fan casts out there and even fan casts for Hal Jordan's still going on, like ones that have like actors that haven't been mentioned at all. Um, but yeah, the John Stewart thing will be interesting because I think Aaron Pierre might have jumped out of that fresh faced sort of thing because he's actually, he isn't, he isn't new. He's been around for a bit. Um, but I guess that Rebel Ridge movie is like the, the big one for him at the moment. But I don't know. It'll be interesting. I think we'll get Hal first. Oh, no. Would they announce them both at the same time? Maybe they would. I, don't, I guess they're both the co-leads. They sh- they're they're going to share the lead like handle for this show. So maybe they might announce them at the same time. Maybe that's why it's taken so long. I don't know. Maybe they already know who John Stewart is. I don't know. But what we can assume from this is that, is that we're going to begin this show in 2026, whether it's the beginning of 2026 or the middle of 2026. I don't know. But that's, of course, based off those filming dates of January through to June next year. Of course, they could push for a late 2025, but like we know like Peacemaker is probably going to come out maybe like September, October next year. So they probably wouldn't push for this. Though Peacemaker is an HBO Max show, not an HBO show. Um... So I don't know, maybe they might want to push it and try and get it done by the end of next year so they can release it by the end of next year. But it wouldn't surprise me if we get it February, March or something of 2026, roughly. But I don't know, that's a wait and see. But also that also depends on like the VFX. You'd expect this show to be VFX heavy for the most part, but that probably depends how far out they go with it. Um, But yeah, once again, it's a wait and see. But that sort of ties into the expectations in regards to how far out they go with it. That wasn't just in regards to the VFX. But overall, I just, I, I don't know if this series will be fully Green Lantern. 
considering like the description that we've got and the overall plot that might be going on, they might be saving a lot of the cosmic overly Green Lantern stuff for a movie. But I'm hoping this isn't just a random story that someone's written and they just chucked lanterns in there. Like, so like essentially the Joker movie is just a random movie. And then they've made Joker the main character and set it in Gotham City. Like that's essentially what that story is. But then again, James Gunn did say, I think it was beginning of last year, I think it was when he announced all the projects, that Lands would kick off his like sort of big mystery and arc in the DC universe. And whether the sequel on Earth is stuff to do with the Manhunters, which I think lines up with having the Lanterns involved, or a larger entity than that, it appears this will be where the questions, in a good way, start to be asked about the universe and where things are really heading. So not questioning like, if it's good or not, but questions like, oh, where's this heading? Oh, does this mean that? Does this mean that? Stuff like that. So I am very much looking forward to all that playing out. Obviously they do, the Hollywood Reporter article did mention that there's a, a murder on earth that then leads to larger things and larger implications. Does anyone, I don't know, you have to let me know in the comments. Do you, th I, I don't know if this would happen. I don't know if James Gunn would do it, but then it might make sense as to why he maybe chose someone that maybe doesn't fit the role that well. I don't know, because, okay, so to finish off the video, just in regards to that death, they make the death someone significant in the Lantern Corps, and by that, I'm not talking about, oh, it's Sinestro or something like that, or Killer Wog gets killed, but another Earth-based Green Lantern member that we might have already seen in this DC universe, that being Guy Gardner. I wonder if they kill Guy Gardner, and that's the big thing, and then maybe you can do some flashbacks where there's some Guy Gardner stuff that ties into it but it's Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart investigating it. I wonder if that, they could do that. Because they, I don't know. Because I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. That's just a weird theory that I just thought of just then that maybe they might do something there. Um, but I don't know. You might have to let me know if that sounds plausible. If they do that, I don't know. Let me know. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on all this stuff. You're looking forward to Lands as a show. Do you have any casting ideas for whether it's the Hal Jordan stuff, whether it's stuff that, you know, options already put forward, like Chris Pine and stuff like that, or a completely new person? Let me know. Same with John Stewart. Let me know any fan cast or just casting ideas down there. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.